I know that in the panel discussion, very good argument. What do I look at as the future of testing? Right? Where am I when I look at maybe five years down the line? Where do I stand? Right? Somebody asked a question saying that, you know, how do I look at as a career in testing? Where is it going from today? Right? That's what we're going to talk. And I want you to participate in that and tell me, you know, if I am wrong in certain assumptions that I'm making here. Right? Because it's all based on certain study that's been done, certain analysis being done by looking at lots of data and content available on emerging technologies as well as learning. Right? Because if a tester, if I'm not the guy who are, is in pace with the change, then I'm obsolete. I can't do the job the, uh, for which I'm, uh, you know, asked for. So that's the point, and all throughout what I'm talking about is a change, right? Everything is changing. So let's look at that, right? This is the shape which uh, all of the, all of you might have be having it, right? This part of your kit. Look at the numbers here. Astonishing numbers. Anybody who's got a chance to look at what these numbers mean? We are all testers, right? Yes or no? Yeah. How is this numbers looking like? Look at what we are talking about. 2.9 million emails sent every second. Right? What are you looking at? 15 million tweets per day. Look at the size. Now the question for me, to you is, as a tester, what are you thinking about? What is the thought in your mind when you see that numbers? We look at the numbers, it's there in the very beautiful case. How to test that? How to test that? Okay, very good. No, that's a simple question because I'm a tester, right? Nobody can challenge that. So I will discount that question. But what else is that triggering me? What is the trigger for me? How do I get that infrastructure? Infrastructure, how do I get the infrastructure? Look at the numbers. It's very, very alarming numbers, not like small numbers, right? So, everybody's talking about big data, right? We're talking about data by 2020, I don't know what the figures are. You know, Gartner talks about different figures, NASCOM talks about different figures, McKinsey talks about different figures, but as a tester, what I'm talking about is it's going to be multifold, right or wrong? Yeah, it's going to be multifold. Now, how do I test it? You might have seen a talk by Anand in the morning where he's talking about you know big data testing. There will be other guys who will talk about how do I do a testing on the cloud. Fair enough, that's all good. But how am I geared for it? Tool on IBM, fantastic. Can I use the tool? How can I use the tool? Today is one tool. Next, when you are in the next conference, there's a new tool which has come. Even before that, you'll see another two or three tools on the same functionality this day. All right? Biggest challenge. You know, big data. Big is going to be the business. That's what I read in the paper. Right? Big is really big. And it's going to be very astonishing in terms of the numbers and size that we're looking at. Next one. Cloud. The buzzword. You talk. Read about anything. Talk about any conferences. You will hear about the cloud. Right? So cloud in itself is a large segment in area. Second thing, amalgamation of cloud and big data increases our complexity. Right? So when you're talking about big data and the cloud, and look at the new ones that we're talking about. Internet of everything, the other big giant problem for us. Before internet of everything, it was internet of things. Where we're talking about devices being coupled together with multiple medium, multiple means, right? So in terms of things, when we talk about IoT, what we're talking about is the way our lifestyle is changed, right? So again, what I'm going to talk about is a change which is being brought into the industry. As soon as I enter my house, I have a remote which opens the door. Get into the house, right? My electricity is all controlled by sensors, right? Go into my home, the appliances are tied to device, you know, with sensors. It's all auto, right? 
forget about the devices that I'm talking about in terms of smartphones and stuff that individually I use. Each individual today comprises or carries more than an average three devices which are connected to each other. So what you're talking about volumes are very much when I talk about IoT, on top of it when you add people and process, I look at internet of everything. Again, a biggest challenge that you have, right? Look at the social media. My goodness, you see there are multiple mediums which are there for us to communicate, to collaborate, to you know, talk to uh, and do whatever you want. So that's another challenge that you have. And on top of it, what you're talking about is, forget about all that. You know, in an organization, you can bring your own device. I'm not, you know, it's now the device is not dependent on anything, right? You bring a smartphone, you can work with that. You bring a tab, you can work with it. You don't need to be a laptop. Old days have gone. We are looking at a big box of a computer and sitting there. Gone days. All this stuff is going back and giving you a new outlook for 2014. Right? Like uh, 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 Shweta said a couple of minutes back, things are changing in terms of the workforce. I don't know if you have uh, attended sessions uh, yesterday of one of my friends uh, from past technologies where they are doing very good, Mind, who we are talking about crowdsourcing. So what they are talking about is blurring up the boundaries of an organization. Going forward, we are talking about there will be no boundaries of workforce. Because technology in our industry, it's all we as a person. Why do we confine to a boundary of an organization? Right? I can work for anybody, everybody, because of the infrastructure is allowed. So going forward, what we're talking about is workforce getting into crowd because it gives me leverage to work for n number of organizations, not tying up with A, B, or C. Right? So that's the where we are looking at. What we are also looking at is boundaryless systems. What I mean by that is, in all the times, systems were, if you look at the earlier times, single tier architecture, then two tier architecture, then we have three tier architecture, we have the application which is there in a box, that's it, such a fine. Today, our applications are landscape. It's not confined to one box, right? The application is connected to multiple devices. So the boundaries of the system is getting blurred. Do you agree with me or not? Yeah? Now the boundaries are getting blurred, which means the systems are boundaryless, right? Now for all that, and also along with that, all your all traditional approach is getting diminished. It's gone to the trash. Right? System under test is gone because there's no system now. What a system we're talking about is a landscape where multiple systems, you know, there is no one system because you fetch the data from another system, you process the data from another system, report it from the third system. What you're talking about is your core system in the, in the entire value chain. Right? Everything is changing. Right? You are getting into a boundaryless system. Right? So, what I'm saying is, the skills and competencies of your testing practice and BU needs to change, right? You can't look at the traditional knowledge which you have gained, you know, as part of college or what you are getting as part of workplace learning. No, right? And that's where I'm saying that we will have to change that as well, right? Because the competencies are going different. If I don't update my competencies, if I don't update my skills, then probably I'm out of, you know, the type of profession that I'm in, right? And that's what I'm trying to bring it to you guys, right? So, when I look at as tester, what is that it's going to be further? A tester needs to embrace the change, right? You can't be rigid. Right? You can't say that I will not accept change. Everything is changing. Development tools are changing. Your customer requirements are changing. The customer wants are changing. Right? So you need to adapt to the change. You need to embrace the change as a tester. Right? Specialization is a must. So I'll give you one uh, uh, good experience that I had. I was looking at a couple of uh, 
uh, the you know good guys whom I thought of will just hire them, and I you know happen to talk to them. And that, specifically, the job description says that an no, automation test, right? So a gentleman comes over and says that yeah, I'm an automation expert. You know, been working for this stuff and so on. Says, okay, automation looks good. And I said, okay, have you done anything? You know, manual testing? No, I am automation guy. I said, wow. So you're automation guy, which means you don't know to execute the scenario. No, no, no. I am Selenium expert. I am equity expert. For me, a tester needs to understand everything end to end. He needs to understand the business. He needs to understand how the app works. Automation is a specialization that brings in, which is on to the horizontal. That's how I look at it as a, as a trade for tester. So specialization is a must, whether you are looking at the tool, whether you are looking at uh, you know, areas like security, or performance, whatever of that is not just a specialization, but on top of testing, which means as an individual, I need to test it robustly, right? Otherwise, I think we are missing somewhere something, right? That's why I said, you know, specialization is a must. They need, we need to be outcome oriented. Things have gone, right, where you know projects come on our lap, we deliver and we are done. We need to think about the outcome. What is it that customer is getting out of it, right? So you need to start thinking on those directions when you're looking at a tester and being a customer focused. So what I'm saying is a tester, traditional tester, forget. I'm a manual tester. I know how to write the scenarios. I'll write the scenarios, depending upon the techniques and design that I have, I will test it, I will sign off, right? Things have changed, it's changing, right? That's what I'm trying to convey. Now what I'm also talking about is, a next generation tester should have this phrase. You know, social media, why I said, I was looking at, you know, in my mind, two things, speed and social media. Speed is something that is very much required for a tester, right? Because you need to react faster. But then I thought with the next generation, what is more important is your connectivity towards social media. How is my app reacting? How is my app looking at it? Because that's what is going to be the future. Integration with all the uh, devices using smartphones and uh, multiple devices and stuff and so on. So I say, you know, you, uh, tester needs to be savvy with social media interaction talking, communicating, and stuff, and so on. Second, mobility. Most of the applications are going to be on mobile devices, whether it's smartphones or any other handheld devices. So I need to have a flavor of mobility in my understanding. How, whether it's an enterprise application, right? Today, you're talking about banking systems which are available on handheld devices, right? So as a tester, I have to look at the system. I have to look at how the system behaves on my handle devices, right? So that's going to be one of uh, the critical one. Agility, nothing to talk about. Agile is the way we work. Until unless I have the agility to make a change faster and quicker, it's not going to be good. Then what I'm talking about is risk assessment. As a tester, if I'm not able to assess the risk, whatever it is, whether it's technological risk, whether it's talk, talking about product risks, project risks, business risks, whatever it is. If I'm not capable of assessing the risks properly, then I'm out of the game, right? Because as a tester, what today I'm talking about is not just a traditional tester, but I am the person who is telling the business whether the, your application or product is fit for release or not. Assessing the risks and coming back with that decision made, right? So that's very important. And what I'm talking about is tomorrow's technology. Whatever we talked about, we will have to know tomorrow's technology to come back. And that's how I'm coining this word smart tester, right? So next generation testers have to be smart so that we can address the challenges that is in front of us in terms of the technology, in terms of all the changes that we have seen. Are you with me? Do you agree with me? Right? So that's what I'm talking about trades. Now, what we're talking about is how do I make a change in the way I look at learning? Right? So traditionally, I learn, I get an engineering degree, right? I am there in the job, my goal finishes there, right? So I'm differentiating between teaching 
and training. That's very different, right? Teaching or training is one to many. That's what you will get it over the schools or colleges. I'm not talking about that. That's what I'm talking about learning. What you're talking about is how important is learning and what I'm talking about is learning is something that's driven by organizations. So all of us who are in corporate, we would have five days of mandatory training or probably seven days of mandatory training. I don't know, depending upon organizations. Do you have that kind of a thing? Right? So those are driven by the organization. Right? That's not driven by me as an individual. Right? They are pushing you. So it's a more of a push. Like Sweta said, it's a push. There's no pull in there in terms of the learning. Right? Because you have to do five days, because of those five days are linked to my, you know, probably, you know, appraisal or and stuff and so on, I need to finish that. I guess I need to get a tick in the box. Right? So what we're talking about is have that workplace learning as a model built in within our organization where you learn from your peers. Right? Because learning has to be a continuous process. Right? If you look at uh, this slide, if you have noticed that in the slide which we was presenting, there are five C's. Continuous in, you know, testing, continuous uh, deployment, you know, continuous uh, uh, you know, requirements capturing, collaborative discussion, all continuously. You, know, you have to keep on changing, right? So what we're talking about is you have to prepare for the change. So organization, what drivers for them is, I'm going to start a new function.